my seat, please. That's where I sit. Excuse me. Excuse me. Here you go. Hello, and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine Material Graph. Today, we are here to look at distance fields. So, what is a distance field? Well, if we go into our scene, up here where it says show, we can hit that. We're going to go to visualize and we're going to click on mesh distance fields. So now what we have here looks kind of spooky. What we are looking at are some raycasts that are done offline and they basically say how close are we to a surface. So if we were to grab this windmill and we'll just chuck it way up in the sky, little darling. This is just a visual representation of, you know, where the distance fields are and how accurate they are to the mesh. So what can these actually be used for? Today, we're gonna to be talking about how materials can interact with distance fields. So let's just go ahead and grab a cube. Fantastic. And we're gonna create a new material. We're gonna pop that material onto the cube and we're gonna open up this material. I'm gonna put its base color to zero for now and also its specular down to zero. We now have a black cube, fantastic. The node we're going to be looking at is called distance to nearest surface. You don't have to plug anything into it, although depending on what you're doing, you might want to use world position excluding material offsets. But if we were to just plug this into the base color, then you can see pff, nothing useful is coming out of this, right? And the reason this is happening is because this cube itself is emitting a distance field. So any material that is using distance fields in its shader calculation, more often than not, you don't want it to be emitting a distance field. So let's go into here. We're gonna go effect, distance field, lighting, untick that, and now our cube is completely white. Now the reason this cube is completely white is because it is more than one centimeter away from a distance field. So what we're gonna do is this distance to nearest surface, we're going to divide it by a number. So this means that the gradient from black to white is gonna be as large as whatever we divide it by. We want the gradient from black to white to be 100 units big instead of being a single unit big. And now as we move this down, you can see that the color changes from black being it's zero units away from a distance field to white, meaning it is 100 or more units away from a distance field. So more often than not, what you're gonna wanna do with this is to saturate it and one minus. So now our cube is black by default and it becomes white as it approaches a distance field. So your imagination is probably racing at this point thinking, okay, well, uh, what can I possibly use this for? Well, what do we usually use a black and white mask for? you may ask. A lerp. Let's go to a lerp and we're going to put this mask into the alpha and we can just, you know, use two colors or something. And yeah, this is doing exactly what we'd expect it to do. It's lerping between green and purple using the distance field. Yippee. So this is still pretty useless, arguably. So what if we were to do something like add time, then put it through a sine wave and then put that into the base color. Okay, well now we have this sort of radiating effect coming from a distance field. To prevent this part here from flashing white, we can just multiply the result from the sine wave by the initial mask. And so that's gonna say, okay, do this radiating effect, except the bit that was usually black, we're gonna keep it black. So now we have this. If we wanted to make more bands, we could multiply before the sign. So if we say multiply by five, then there's gonna be five bands. And if we wanted to slow it down, we could say divide time by, let's just say three. So this will be three times slower now. So when I look at this, first thing I think of is ripples in water. Imagine that this pier is our landscape and we have these ripples, you know, doing their thing. Um, I actually use this already in my water shader. Um, if we were to exaggerate this effect 
by going into the material instance and turning the refraction of the ripples up, then you can see very clearly that we're using distance fields to create ripples in the water from the shore. So, you know, we can move this anywhere. So we could take this water plane, we could put it over this bridge, and wherever the bridge intersects with the water, it's going to create ripples. You can actually see in my river material, I create turbulence around distance fields and also create foam. And I also do some stuff so that things behind the flow of water build up and then in front of the water, it dips down a bit. Another really wacky thing we could do is use this gradient to kind of displace this mesh. So if we were to say uh, maybe a distance of like 50, and if we were to get the vertex normal world space of this mesh, and we'll mask it in the R and G, so it isn't the up and down normal. Uh, and then what we could do is multiply it by a number, and then multiply it by the result here. So you might be able to guess what this is going to do. <laughs> Essentially what we've created now is like a blob, right? So as it <laughs> as it comes down to the ground, it just blobs outwards. Uh, you know, we can bloop, bloop, bloop. You know, you could use this for like your slimes or something, I guess. And so, you know, this is pretty whack. Uh, and it looks kind of weird, but essentially this is how, uh, this is how meta balls are created. Um, if we were to not mask the R and the G, and just do all directions, then you'll see that this tends to, I guess, like, engulf anything that it comes near. So, it's, it's fun, and I'm sure that you could find a, you know, a way to implement this in your game. So, basically, to recap, a distance field is a field of distance around an object that a material can read from. By dividing the distance near a surface by any number, you can increase the gradient from 0 to 1, the length of it. If you then 1 minus that, it will flip it around so that it's white near the distance field and black when it's away from it, which is usually more useful in most cases. And then after that, you are free to do whatever you want with it. So what I'd suggest is plugging it into the base color to make sure that it's kind of doing what you want it to do uh, and like reacting to the distance fields however you want it to and then after you've visualized how it's interacting just go nuts do some wacky stuff with it so if you enjoyed today's video and you want to help out these tutorials and stuff the best thing that you can do is to like the video and subscribe to the channel and if you want to stay up to date with all the future videos whenever they come out make sure you click that little bell icon thingo because youtube and algorithm and the, the blah 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 if you have any questions at all about materials or animation or just unreal engine development in general feel free to join our discord it's a very friendly place if you've got questions that you think are like really dumb and you're afraid you're gonna be laughed at you don't have to worry about it whatsoever. Everyone there is super friendly. If you do want to go the extra mile in supporting this YouTube channel and these tutorials, you can subscribe to our Patreon below for as little as $1 per month. So with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.